Hi guys, today I've got on the podcast Alex Kiko. He's got a wealth of knowledge in terms of supplements and pharmaceutical compounds. You definitely won't need to speed up this podcast. It's great to have you on the podcast, Alex. And so if we kick off with GHKCU, and I was thinking, because a lot of people talk about doing creams and things like that for your skin, but they're not much as talked about with the injections and the kind of the pros and cons. I mean, understand for injections, I mean, how, what I'm curious about is how systemically does it build up compared to doing it on your skin or on your hair or something like that? I mean, do, do you have much um, knowledge on that? A lot, yeah. So GHKCU, first of all, uh, glycol l histol l lysine right? Complex with copper, right? So look at the name. It kind of tells you a lot about what it has the potential to do. It's so cool because, like you said, that lower Dalton weight, it's like, what, 300? you got to be, what, below 5 or something like that to absorb through the skin, you can apply it locally to do multiple things. Everyone talks about, again, uh, the skin, right? The hair base changes, which is awesome. So it'll drive a vascular endothelial growth factor and transforming growth factor, elastin. It'll actually modulate some of the hair base genes to, it doesn't actually upregulate uh, hair based hypertrophy through the genetic coding. It actually downregulates hair loss. And then it also drives follicular hair protein synthesis. So it does all the cool things with that, right? Locally applied systemically applied and we go into the injectable preparation right so now we have okay there's a localized effect to a lot of these i don't even want to call them somatrophic base compounds but i kind of like to classify ghkcu with that in that uh same kind of conversation because of the repair based genes so you're looking at like 50 plus repair based genes so if we have someone who let's say uh tears a bicep easy example right one of the first things you have to do in that environment is assess it from a neonatal gene aspect or a paragenetic based aspect, actin sequestering, and then get blood into that area, right? So what does that sound like? TB500, GHKCU, and BBC157. And you have some occlusion work, maybe some red light therapy, things like that. But if we start going down that route, that thought process, GHKCU has that localized eject, uh, injection application route and also the systemic route where you could just go sub Q into your belly fat or whatever kind of fat literally doesn't, could be anywhere. It could be your adductors, your neck, doesn't matter. All this getting into circulation. You can start making some long-term genetic changes, but also have spillover into the skin-based side of things, the hair-based side of things, the antibacterial side of things. So actually E. coli and things like that, I use GHKCU to cure a lot of different bacterial-based issues. Um, oh, okay. If we look at the overall, and this one, this is why I relate it kind of to the growth hormone family, even though it's not at all. It's because what it does with decorin. So myostatin up, decorin down. Decorin up, myostatin down. Myostatin is not the thing that people really have to worry about with building muscle tissue, um, but it's still part of the conversation, right? It's part of the whole That's anabolic okay. conversation. So what this does really cool is decorin takes it up, pulls myostatin down. So now all of a sudden as an overall recovery aid, as a muscle building, building agent, as a recover from injury agent, you start to see, oh, this has even more application. So we have the locally applied to the area that's injured if you inject it. So intra-articulate as well, if you have like the elbow pains and things like that, same with uh, TB500 and BBC157, but those are more localized receptor mediated clearance. That's this what is I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, if it's more localized for that, yeah, okay. Exactly, yeah. So we have the localized receptor mediated clearance on the healing peptides, those two, but then GHKCU is more so on the stem cell satellite cell conversation. So you're doing the localized effects via two different routes, depending on the product. And then GHKCU, like we said, if you want kind of the global benefits, you can inject it. If you have uh, some people that have had like um, the wounds that won't heal, they'll have a cut on their arm, things like that. You can also literally get it into a vial, just prepare it, reconstitute it and drip it onto the area like you would with a BPC-157. You see healing locally applied there as well. So you maybe don't have to go the cream route, which they're awesome, but they can get pretty expensive and sometimes they can be harder to find. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll so be wondering, guy, I was just going to say, um, so what, what about for prevention of injury? Say, I mean, I did a recent cycle of TB500 and um, BPC, and then I now I'm gone from that and then doing BP, uh, sorry, um, doing a GHK as a kind of prevention just to maintain so I don't get injured again. I'm wondering what you think of that. Prophylactically, they're so awesome. Like you can only make the argument that, okay, maybe the, the copper toxicity side of things but you go down that thought process and you think, hmm, copper toxicity, I have diarrhea and I start vomiting. As soon as those really co copper toxicity levels kind of reach high, not only that, but 
Copper deficiency is it's turning into one of the more common deficiencies in our society. Today. That's global, not just over here in the States because you're in the UK, pretty much everywhere. So a lot of the issues with myocardial infarctions, a lot of the uh, cardiac hypertrophies I'm seeing is partially due to downregulated or uh, modulated and modified iron levels and downregulated copper levels because you have that same kind of inverse relationship with yeah, same with zinc, zinc as well. If you over supplement zinc, you can become deficient. So you can't even copper. Yeah. Exactly. So you're trying to balance this out in a society that most people are aren't even taking a simple multivitamin or a uh, one milligram tablet of copper. So usually the whole copper toxicity problem is not an issue. And if we look at like how to apply this, because it kind of gets back to your question as well, the higher the dose, the shorter the duration. So if you're doing something like the background prophylactic dose where it's maybe months on end, 100 micrograms daily sub to you into your stomach fat, good to go. You could do that for eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, depending on what you're trying to drive. If you have an acute injury, I've had certain people who they didn't have TB or BPC on hand. They were at a strong man competition tore their bicep, going back to the bicep example, and they only had GHKCU because their friend had it. It took a full 50 milligram vial, like, you know, in that one single bolus. Ooh, but again, okay. that's a one single bolus, one time thing. Yeah. You can do different amounts, different doses, depending yeah. on what the problem is, what you're trying to drive. So it's more, okay, why am I using this? And then you kind of go back and say, okay, that'll dictate the dosage and the frequency and duration. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's got me curious. 50 um, what milligrams. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, because it's a huge gonna... amount. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a lot where you're not going to be doing that long term yeah. but as a one-time bolus therapy it drove up enough recovery so that by the time we got home because he had to fly home it was like 48 hours later we still turned on those repair based genes gave him time to get home to then apply some growth hormone bbc tb pentose and other players like that um so that's not happening all the time though if you're the person who's taking prophylactically like you for like the repair side of things from a biological so muscle tissue or soft tissue aspect you're what, a couple hundred micrograms, you can do that for, you know, four, eight, 12 week, you know, uh, increments on end, something like that, pull it out, depending on what you're doing with TB and BBC. You could also do like, uh, you know, four week on course of each. So a month of BBC, a month of TB, a month of GHKCU, off for a month, like you can do it cyclical, you can base it on so many different things on your paradigm. Um, but that's generally what we're looking at there with application. Okay, and then what do you think of people doing it, say topically and injection simultaneously? Yeah, if you need that for sure, because you'll get the, the systemic benefits on the neurological side of things, on the epigenetic side of things, more so than if you apply it topically. Topically, we'll obviously still, still get into circulation, but it'll be more locally applied to that area. So more localized effects to skin, to hair. Like I haven't seen in my application with whatever, a couple hundred people with GHKCU to this point, where if you apply it for like the, the, the creams for your face, for the wrinkles or derma roll to foam into your hair and stuff like that. I don't see it having spillover into that global recovery of myological tissue, which to me says genetic repair wise, probably not being turned on too right. much, uh, okay, but yeah. you would complement it with an injectable therapy. But if you yeah. just need the hair or skin stuff, yeah, just a cream or a lotion, stuff like yeah. that. So it's very, so it's very localized on the skin. It won't build up systemically. Yeah. Okay. And it, it will to a degree, because no matter what, if it's applied uh, topically, it's getting into the skin, it's still going to go systemic. But mm. that's where you get into splitting hairs and saying, okay, what happens in reality? Even though it is going systemic, the majority of those G uh, GHKCU molecules, those pro I just call them proteins and everything at this point, mm. but the majority of those molecules are going to that localized area and the spillover is so minor, it's almost not uh, worth noting. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then do you think using it topically for years on end, what do you think of that in your skin? Um. Everything has a place and purpose, right? Yeah. I would say no matter what, we're trying not to use everything all the time, yeah. just because if you do that, which in this peptide kind of ancillary player world, it's so hard not to. Everything has mm -hmm. so many benefits, right? To me, I would probably do something like some time on, some time off, just to rotate other compounds in. I don't mm -hmm. think it's anything inherently wrong. Like if you were at 100 micrograms, I mean, unless you're having a toxicity issue, which almost no one is going to have at that dosage, given the, the copper requirements of day-to-day -day human uh, physiology, I feel like you could be at 100 micrograms probably for years and not have problems. I've had a couple people at this point where, and this is a little bit different because they did have cardiac myopathies, um, some Pekinji fiber-based damage, some septum damage, cardiac-based problems because of low uh, copper levels. It's their background therapy pretty much for life, but they also had a specific damage oh, yeah, yeah. defense, you know? So it's a little bit mm. different. Mm. Yeah, and then... 
I mean, I gather with most peptides, you know, obviously the longer you do it, the more antibodies build up and the less efficacious it becomes. So then, yeah, I mean, that got me wondering. I do GHK quite a bit. I mean, I've used quite a few bottles of it on my skin. I have it combined with metrixol and uh, agiraline, like a kind of combination of all of them. Yeah. And then, yeah, it seems to work really well. But then I'm wondering if I just keep on doing it. I've been doing it solid for like quite a few, like three months solid now and then. So I'm thinking maybe just give myself a month off, just uh, try something else on my skin, just to kind of let the those antibodies kind of go back down again and then cycle it, basically. Your skin looks amazing from my end. What I always <laughs> like to do for a lot of people, and I do it for myself too, I just did it with uh, uh, NAC eye drops. So the, the actual carnison kind. Um, I pulled it out just to see if it was doing what it was supposed to, and then to see if those uh, positive benefits regress, and they did. So can't see eye drop wise. I need those to keep up with the ocular restraints or rather the ocular demands of my day. So same thing for you. Skin's looking good. You know it worked. Pull it out for a month. Don't do anything else and just see what happens. If you don't see regression, then cool. It made those long-term genomic changes. If not, maybe you do need to apply something or that same product longer term. So it's always good to see, okay, what's having that non-genomic acute effect and that long-term genomic effect? What's really changing the genes and to a degree, obviously, since we're going to be aging no matter what, it's kind of like you're going to have to have something in, but it's figuring out your perfect frequency because everyone's going to have different amount of damage from sun exposure, from day-to-day mm. -day stressors, from everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's, that's why I'm trying to maintain the skin as I get older because then it becomes easier to like people listen to you more if you've got good skin. They're like, well, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> How old are you? Uh, I'm going to be 38 uh, later this summer. Oh, wow. Geez. Okay. I'm 31, but I've always looked 50. So <laughs> no, you, know, I got... you don't look 50. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to say you've got a very good headline of hair for sure. <laughs> I, in high school, I used to have it down to my shoulders and I wear this like cool leather jacket. I thought I was so cool. I was really fat at the time. Um, but the hair was always nice, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, do you, do you use it on your hair or is it just naturally, um, you just naturally have just good natural. hair? natural. Yeah. yeah, between my hair and my traps, there are two things that were always just naturally good on me, you know? Mm. Yeah, look, I'm kind of in the, in the middle. I do take things for, um, like, do tasks arrive for my hair, but only two days a week. Um, I did, I do try GHK here and there, but it's expensive. I just use the minoxidil instead and just do it that way. It's cheaper, so. Did you ever try anything down the route of, like, spir uh, spironolactone topical creams or, like, the caffeine shampoos and things like that for stimulation? Um, yeah, I have done the caffeine shampoos, and then I'm going to try that RU something or other. Do you know that one that uh, um, lowers this, your sensitivity to DHT? Do you know there's a new compound that's last last few years? I'm going to be trying that in the next kind of month. Oh, very cool. That, I think that works as well, yeah, because I don't – the problem is when you do something for your hair, um, dutasteride has side effects. So like I was, I'm doing it just two days a week to try and get some kind of fluctuation and not completely suppress DHT, get some kind of fluctuation in it, but just nowhere near having the natural levels. Because I'm on TRT anyway, so it's naturally going to be higher anyway, my DHT. So it's just trying to kind of moderate it a little bit with minimize the side effects too. It's a balance. It really is a balance mm. that you'll find after you try all 25 different things you're like you know what i saw the best results on three of them so i'm going to stick to those i'm going to rotate those in and out and you'll find like your perfect paradigm and that's where like you know if you're doing it for yourself where you have those weekly check-ins those weekly checkups with yourself and just say being unbiased is this really working or am i not seeing any changes at all so then you can slowly scrap you can do your pharmacological mapping with all these products and just see is it working or is it not worth it 